This is how you can make literally anyone addicted to you according to psychology. And warning, this is extremely powerful, so use it wisely. According to Tony Robbins, there are six fundamental human needs. And if anything in our lives manages to meet at least three of these needs, we become addicted to it. So imagine this, what if you meet four, five or even six of your crush's needs? They'll be obsessed with you. So let's break it down. Certainty means being their support system, they need to feel like they can count on you. Variety is adding a little bit of spice, being unpredictable. Significance is making them feel important. Love and connection, making them feel loved emotionally and physically. Growth, they need to feel like they're growing and evolving in your presence. And contribution is they need to feel like they're adding value and they're contributing to your life. Why do you care about stupid people? It's stupid people, these people have power. I've always wondered about this. Why does it seem like so many people in power are so dumb? It's like, why can't we get a better class of leaders? And I've thought about it a bit more. And I think, this is my thesis, that power is inherently anti-intellectual. Because what does intellect do? Intellect questions power. It speaks truth to power. It critiques power. And power doesn't like that. And so power has to speak to the lowest common denominator. It dumbs everything down. It's an anti-intellectual force. And that's why it seems like those in power are also the dumbest. All right, some tips I've learned from these dark psychology books I've been reading. Excuse how I look, because I just got done with the gym. And I'll comment all the books and the authors in the comments. I already knew some of this stuff because I've always been interested in psychology, especially dark psychology due to the men I've dated and people I've been around in my childhood. Uh, but one of the first tips I would say is always say less than necessary. That's one of the rules in the 48 Laws of Power book. Be very careful who you open up to and what information you're giving. When you say less and you sit back, that's a lot of power. That's going to make the other person talk more. There are a few instances where you do want to talk, but that would be my tip number one. I can go through some of the things I've learned, but it's a lot already. And I think saying less than necessary is something that for me really resonated, so. Let's talk about the art of conversation. Number one is eye contact. Don't overdo it, glance to the side, glance down, but always maintain eye contact. Show that you're present and you're paying attention and don't look at your phone. Maintain calmness by speaking slow, relaxed, you maintain mystery by asking a lot of questions about them. That way the conversation will be a lot about them and you won't be talking that much about yourself. So there's gonna be a little bit of mystery there. So these methods aren't just used for romantic reasons, but they're also used for professional reasons, business, talking to different clients. Like, so if you carry yourself in this way, you come off as very interesting and intriguing. Like and follow for more. Pampered Royal is easily manipulated. The Pampered Royal was constantly spoiled by their parents. Their wants, needs, and desires were constantly met in their youth. As most children are taught to entertain themselves through finding their own friends and interests, the Pampered Royal has learned that others will do the entertaining for them. Seducers will target this type by providing a lot of change and distraction. With new places to visit, a colorful and dazzling appearance, or miss History, the pampered royal will eventually become highly loyal to their seducer, doing just about anything that they ask for. Like and follow for the next type. watching this welcome you've made it to the manipulation masterclass in this series i'm going to be giving you the secrets on how you can avoid being controlled up here and give you the tools to become more powerful and influential under any circumstance now before we get into specifics here are some base principles you must understand number one manipulation is not evil your ability to manipulate simply means your ability to influence others it is used as a tool to help people or to hurt people for example, your parents manipulated you as a kid to believe that drugs were only bad for you. They did this with good intention as they wanted you to stay safe. Second is that the game of power is always being played whether you like it or not. In every single human interaction that you face, there is somebody that gets their way 
more than everyone else. If you try to avoid the game of power, you simply become the prey. Lastly, you think manipulation is like a puppet master controlling someone else. No. It is the ability to enter somebody else's world and change it from the inside. Follow if you want to enroll. This is one of the darkest manipulation techniques that someone can use to make you fall in love with them. This is very toxic and I don't recommend using it, but I want you to be aware of it. And this is alternating pleasure with inflicting pain. So there is a three-step formula, where first you need to create a pattern of giving pleasure and validation. Then you need to break it. You need to pull away, be cold, be distant. So what this does, it makes the other person insecure and it makes them chase you because they want that validation. When you treat someone like shit, it makes their self-esteem go down. And the only thing that can make it go up again is you. So the third step is validating them again. Causing pain in a person makes them form an attachment to you and it makes you unforgettable to them. how you can read anybody like a book. The first thing that you must understand is that nobody is hiding anything. Everybody has all of their cards showing, but you're just not aware of it. Here's an example. So let's say you have a friend and this person constantly roasts his other friends on a few certain traits. What that guy or girl is doing every time they judge someone, roast someone, or even gossip about someone is subliminally showing you exactly what their biggest fears are. Now, how do I know this? You never will attack someone with a weapon that you yourself doesn't think is powerful. The reason why we use a gun to kill someone is because we know that same gun would do the same damage to us. It is the exact same way socially. So if you have a friend that roasts someone constantly for being like a virgin, their biggest fear is getting no hoes. If you have a friend that constantly body shames people, their biggest fear is being body shamed themselves. Once you become aware of this, you're gonna have a lot of power. That's how you can get in anyone's head. First step is you have to read the person. There are different types of people who react to different things, so here are some examples. First off, you got the shy introvert. This person will not be very comfortable around you, especially during small talk. To earn this person's trust, you yourself need to have a deep conversation about yourself and your vulnerabilities. Open up to him. Next, you got the rude introvert. This person is antisocial and rude. This person is silent, they're not gonna wanna talk to you, and they're most likely judging everyone else. So to get them to open up, you need to do the same thing. Look around and start making condescending jokes about other people to them. They're gonna open up because they feel like they can relate with you. Next, we have the toxic alpha. Within first contact, they're gonna try to put you in your place. Do not outshine or defy this person. They're not gonna like you. Be unpredictable, but butter them up like hell. Do not be a suck up though. Show that you're an alpha as well. You can manipulate them if you appear confident and feed their ego. Next, you got the funny guy. Do not just laugh at all his jokes. This person probably has a specific sense of humor. You need to show that you're in the same topic of comedy as him as well. Add on to their jokes and they're gonna love you. Lastly, you got the smart one. Ask a lot of questions. They're not thinking about you? You fucking sure about that? Let me break it down to you. Why the fuck do you keep dreaming about them? Why the fuck do you keep thinking about them? On a quantum physical, metaphysical, fucking universal understanding, you are thinking about them and dreaming about them and feeling them and feeling what they're perceiving because of the fucking fact that they are fucking thinking about you. Remember what the fuck I told you? They're obsessed with you. Obsessed with you. Why do they need to be obsessed with you? Because of the fact when they're obsessed... They can have you as a possession rather than seeing you and appreciating who you are. This is why they're constantly thinking about you. This is why they might text you while watching this. This is a fucking sign, a universal sign. Pay attention. Things narcissists say, but what they really mean. Part two. I don't remember doing that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm very aware of what happened, but if I pretend to forget, hopefully you will too. Why are you attacking me? Why are you calling me out on my BS? Don't do that. No, you misunderstood what I was saying. Now you twist in my words. <sighs> I did say that, but now I have to change it up because now you reacting to it. See, this is why I can't with you. You love drama. I'm actually the one that loves drama. <laughs> it feeds my supply so good. Keep it up. You shouldn't feel like that because I didn't mean it that way. 
I'm gonna tell you how to feel because whatever way you feel, I'm not the cause of it. I can't do nothing right, so I guess I'm a bad person, hmm? Why won't you just accept the abuse? You know how I am, stop trying to change me. Why can't you just look past all the bogus stuff that I do like all the other enablers in my life? Story time. Tyler came to me last night and she said, I've been talking to this guy and I've seen him once. He's now sent me a message telling me not to reply to any comments or any messages from guys from this point forth. She said to me, what should I do? I said to her, how does it make you feel? She said, it makes me feel like shit. She goes, that's a red flag, dad. And I said, well, tell him that. And she said, I feel uncomfortable. I don't want to be mean. I said, speaking your truth is not mean. It's moving forward with assertiveness. So she sent him a message and she said, I need to come forward in my truth and no human will ever tell me who I can or can't see. To which he then replied, oh, look who's grumpy. This is manipulative behavior. He is now shifting the blame onto her. Watch out for this sort of behavior. Stay strong. They're gonna make them suffer. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna make them fucking suffer every single fucking day. You're gonna take away your fucking attention. You're gonna take away their fucking energy by taking away your fucking attention. You're not gonna give them any more fucking texts and you're not gonna give them any more fucking calls. Do you understand me? I want you to make sure that you make them fucking suffer every single fucking day. Every day! Let them understand. Let them feel it inside of their soul. Let them fucking understand what it meant to fucking make you miserable every fucking day of your life. Let them realize what the fuck they fucked up on. That's right. You are incredible. You are amazing. Don't fucking forget it. Learn to gain confidence from all the shit that's going on. This is how Kim Kardashian used number one in the 48 Laws of Power. Law number one, never outshine the master. I'm going to attach the quote here. Kim was posing as Paris Hilton's sidekick. However, through her friendship with Paris, she already had plans to create her own reality show. Kim would pose as smaller and less interesting than Paris, preventing her from inspiring fear and insecurity. This was a power move and greatly benefited Kim as she started to gain more and more publicity. Things really started to change for Kim as she became more visible to the public eye, being quick to hop on social media and a few scandals, which ultimately led to her success. Follow for more. Just kidding, this is how you do it. Create anticipation. You can do this by either texting just their name right before you go to sleep and then not replying until the morning after, or by saying something like, we need to talk or I have to tell you something, and then leaving this space of hours for them to imagine what you're going to say. So this does two things. One, it opens a loop in their mind and they'll start imagining all these different scenarios of what you could say because our mind hates open loops and they'll try to close it. And two, people fall in love through their imagination, through the image they have of the person and not the person themselves. So give people the space and the distance to think about you to fall for you.
Body language signs a girl is really, really, really into you. One, exposing the neck. And it drives men crazy for a reason because literally she's giving access to her pheromones. And at the same time, it shows off the roundness of her face, therefore, that she has estrogen. And this also explains why girls like to play with their hair when they're around the guy that they like because it helps them to ooze their pheromones better. <laughs> If you want to make a girl you need to be able to get inside of her mental, into her psyche, okay? If you can't tap into that, you're never going to really have that mind-blowing orgasm that she's craving. You ever wondered why men with feminine energy are more seductive? The dandy is a seducer that uses both feminine and masculine energy. Dandies are opposed to conformity, and they do this to show their disdain for societal norms. The dandy displays a unique epitome of both masculine and feminine energy, and their style is intriguing. This principle also applies to female dandies. Typically, they don't care what other people think, and they are very hard to please. They are masters at the art of living. Everything in their life is aesthetic, and the key is ambiguity. Regardless of your gender, if you can mix masculine and feminine energy to evoke intrigue, you will become a highly seductive person. Like and follow for the next type. How to become the woman that men obsess over and desire. There are three main psychological aspects of attraction. And first is developing feminine energy. In order for attraction to occur, there needs to be polarity between the masculine energy and the feminine energy. Without this polarity, attraction cannot occur. Psychologically speaking, a little girl becomes a woman through her sexuality. This is like the base, but there are many other aspects. So, for instance, a little girl will feel like she's being used for sex, while a woman will have sex for her own pleasure and because she enjoys it. Another important aspect of feminine energy is being able to be present in your own body and with your feelings. Two. A man's attraction is triggered by how desirable a woman is to other men. That sensation of uniqueness that he has something that others want, but only he can have. 3. A woman becomes more attractive when she's not always available, when she has a life of her own and is independent. If the man doesn't have to fight for her, she is not important to him. Did you know that you can influence anyone to do what you want by only changing the tone of your voice? If you want to seduce a man, you will do so by using a higher pitch and a softer tone when you speak. Breathe all the way in and speak as you release the air. Would you like to go for a walk in the afternoon? If you want to project authority, you do so by lowering your tone at the beginning of the sentence. Breathe out and then speak. Would you like to go for a walk in the afternoon? And if you want to win friends and become popular, you're going to mirror their tone of voice, enthusiasm, and speed of talking. Do you want to go for a walk in the afternoon? I have so much to tell you. Yes, sure, let's go for a walk in the afternoon. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm so tired. You want to go for a walk in the afternoon? Yeah, sure. I'm kind of tired too. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. Word that a man will use around you if he doesn't want to hurt your feelings but also wants to kind of let you down lately and i've seen so many women ignore the word make excuses for the word romanticize situations and i've also heard from my male clients that this is exactly what they mean when they use this common word the word is busy if a guy tells you he's too busy what he really means is he doesn't view you as a priority follow for more and good luck